If you want to be a great artist, you've got to make bad art. No, I'm serious. This is where I started out back in 2018. It's taken me thousands of hours and countless drawings to get to where I am today. If you set out to only make great drawings, you're destined to fail. It's inevitable. So why not instead choose to make bad drawings and intentionally fail upwards? The key to fast growth as an artist is to draw bad on purpose. You can only make what you're already capable of creating and slowly push that boundary forward with time. So, if you set out to make an awful drawing, you're also destined to fail. Drawing is really hard, so chances are you're gonna accidentally get a few things right along the way. But when you aim to draw bad, it massively lowers the pressure. The cost to your stamina is slashed, since any expectations you typically have are taken out of the picture. When you sit down to practice normally, if you've got it in your head that you've got to make a good looking piece of art, then each line carries so much extra weight. It's not enough to just be at the level you're at, you need to be better. And if you need to be better, if where you currently are just isn't good enough, then with every additional brushstroke, the pressure and frustration builds because every extra mistake piles that stress on even further. If you forget about trying to make a great drawing and instead aim to make a bad one, or just focus solely on the act of drawing, then that pressure is lifted immediately. That weight is created by the expectations and goals that you've set, right? So if you change the goal, that weight will disappear along with it. At least in theory. You've got to be careful here because it's not enough to just think about doing it or to say you're changing the goal, you have to really mean it. It might be easy to pick up your pencil and do a quick squiggle, but you might find it's a little harder than you think to actually start and finish a deliberately bad drawing. Now, instead of pressure to make a great piece of art, you might feel like you're just wasting time, that you've got more important things to do, it's not good enough to sit here scribbling when you've got real work to do and studies to tackle. But even though it may feel like wasted time, I can promise you it's far from it. Like I said, the key to truly fast growth as an artist is through making bad drawings. If you're confident and comfortable with committing to making bad drawings, you'll be way more likely to tackle the things you're weakest at. Let's say you want to draw people in extreme perspectives. This is one of the most technically challenging things that you can do as an artist. Anatomy and perspective are hard enough on their own, but to put them both together and push them to the extreme almost feels insurmountable. If you're coming in with the bar set really high, you're inevitably going to fail because this is something you don't even know how to do yet. How could you possibly get it right first try, or even in your first hundred tries? And this is only if you even work up the courage to start in the first place. If you're alright with getting it wrong though, and can really enjoy making bad drawings over and over, you're going to be more willing to take on that challenge, and you'll learn faster from it. You'll be more willing to dive deep into the hardest aspects of drawing because there'll be no pressure to get it right. If you're jumping into where every line you make is incorrect, that means every line is a new opportunity to learn. Every small mistake you make is another chance to course correct. Just think about this for a second. When does the learning actually happen? Are you learning more from your mistakes or from your successes? When you're getting everything right, you aren't getting the signals you need to push you in any sort of direction. If everything looks correct, then there's not much more room for growth, right? But if you let yourself draw badly on purpose, then every mistake you make will show you exactly what needs more attention. And since you've ditched the need to make a good drawing, the cost of failure is lowered as well. So when you inevitably fail, you won't be crushed under that enormous weight. The final reason it's so important to make bad art is for creativity's sake. As an artist, your entire role is creativity. It's exploring new ideas, trying out and refining a new technique, sketching out and concepting a whole world. Let's say you're working on some concept art project and you have to design a merchant that sells funky items from all over the world. What's this guy look like? Would he look better tall or short? Pudgy or lanky? What about his personality? If you don't give yourself the space to make bad drawings, how are you ever going to figure out the design of this character? You aren't going to nail it first try, and if you do, you aren't exactly making concept art because you aren't exploring the concept all that far, right? At least for me, some of the most fun I have in art is in the idea generation stages. Coming up with a character, figuring out what style of clothing they'd wear, would they look better with a scar or covered in tattoos, what about the design of those markings, etc. If you have to get it right first try, you aren't giving yourself the space that you need to be creative. If you instead think of every individual drawing as a stepping stone towards the next one you're going to make, and towards eventually reaching the top of that mountain, then you'll start to learn way faster and you'll enjoy the journey a whole lot more along the way. 
Most of the drawings that make it into these time lapses I don't think look that good at all, but that's okay, that's part of the reason that I leave them in. If I cut them out and only kept the best ones, it might make for a better video, maybe, but those are the drawings where I learn the most, so for now at least, the bad art is here to stay. <laughs> Subscribe if you wanna, and um, uh, bye bye!